Mount back time again. Let's see what we've got this time. This is something to fix, I think. Certainly a piece of test gear. Got a few things here from places. Let's we'll see what we get. So thanks to my supporters, Patreons and YouTube memberships and stuff like that. Lots to buy items from my bag. And better test gear and things to play around with. And these are a couple of GPRB cables. I think I'm going a bit overboard with GPRB now. Now I've got lots of cables and stuff. I just need to actually start using the gear and putting it all together. So this has been protected, it's got some boots over them. Yeah, I'll pull it out. Here we go. That's what it's like. They're quite nice actually. I think they're brand new. I mean the bag even says G by B cable, so it probably is brand new. Cool, so I've now got a bunch of these, so I could potentially connect all my gear together, get the interface working. Now when I played with this previously, I was actually having some problems with two devices, there were two particular devices on my same network in GPOB. It wasn't happy. I think it was the Solitron and the Datron multimeters, both on at the same time. I think it was those. I could talk to one but not the other. It was a bit weird. Anyway, I've got some problems to sort out there. More cables, more options. This is DHL, so there's probably some parts. No, it's the outside of the bag still. Invoice. Let's see what this is. A whole bunch of stuff's out of stock. That's annoying. Three things are out of stock. Just a couple of capacitors. 35 volt, 2300 microfarad axial caps. So axials are quite often used in this older gear. So unfortunately I have to buy these things. And unfortunately they're more expensive than usual. Normal caps are a lot cheaper. Yeah, well, you know, here's what it is. That's the cost of fixing old gear. Right, another DHL package. This has got a whole bunch of stuff in here. This looks interesting. This is from RS. So what do we have in here? ICM 7555 iPads. These are potentially spare parts for the Datron calibrator. It uses those in there. Two and three 906s after I've already bought some locally. It's fairly fast though. I was only Monday when I ordered those. So it's fairly quick. They got here within a week. That's good. That's as fast as it ever gets from them. You've got some MC14049 BDGs. These are surface mount parts, these aren't exactly right. These will work in the Datron if I absolutely have to. It does use this part in there, but it does it in a DIP package instead. DIP 14 package. These are SOICs. But I can put them in the adapter and have them work. And these are some more MC14049s as well. So the ICM 7555 iPads is a 1 MHz rated op amp, I believe. All of these things I don't currently need, but I potentially could need them. These are from Element 14 because it's got five normal lights on there. So what do we have here? Got some more capacitors. This is the stock stuff, I think. 105 degree rated, 330 microfarad, 100 volts. These are the some I had noted down as needing to get them for stock. No particular purpose right now. Interesting, okay. These are 350 volt, 22 microfarad. Really small, interesting ones. How skinny these things are. Rubicon caps. Yeah, I don't know what they're for. I guess I have long forgotten. And these are red green LEDs. Let's open this up. Got the size of a gel packet. Well. Wow. <laughs> Is there anything actually in here? There we go. <laughs> These are very small, so this isn't quite what I had in mind. So these are dual color LEDs, not RGB, these are two color. Not quite what I had in mind. So I've got a piece of gear which I'm trying to fix, and I need to replace a dual color LED that's inside it. And the LEDs are in there much larger than these ones. If I can just wire them in, it'll be all right. I expect I probably can. It's got the same pin out, it's just in a much smaller package, so I probably have to do the little wire leads to the pins or something make it work so it's not like a complete loss for some reason I'm actually having trouble trying to find the right parts let's find out what's in here to be honest I've actually forgotten there's two things I'm expecting to turn up I don't know which one's which well it's wrapped up well enough yeah it kind of I mean, it's got some paper on the top it's not rolled up though so much it's got a little bit it's in bubble wrap but that hard edge is up against the side of the box there. Yeah, front's protected. It's not too bad. 
it made an effort. Another reason I also like to leave packages sitting around is in case of the whole COVID thing, you know, it could be on a surface of a package I'm getting. So I've got the package sitting around for a while first, it means there's less chance of COVID being a problem. In reality, it probably doesn't matter that much, but you know, it's just a improved chance. That's a small little box. So let's have a close look at this. So we've got a tilting bar on the bottom. That's nice, that's still there. No feet though, I would have thought it would be feet on here, but they're not present. So I'm going to have to probably sort something out for that, 3D print some. Figure out how to actually design those ones. I'm not quite familiar with that particular footprint, that's a new one on me. Rear, it's got a voltage line selection, which is good. Fuse holders in place. Standard IAC connector. And that's what the front looks like. It's an 8447A dual amplifier. So it does 0.1. Megahertz to 400 megahertz with a maximum gain of 20 dB, maximum 30 dBm input. And it's dual ones, so 50 ohms in and out. I thought this could be a handy thing to have laying around, you know. There's been times I wanted to amplify a small signal or maybe use it as a probe or something like that. You could do like a near field probe, hook it up to this, you can amplify it to make it a better signal for your test gear to pick up, that kind of thing. That's what I was thinking of anyway. So I thought it'd be quite interesting. I don't know if it works. I think it's supposed to work. They said it works. But just because I say it works doesn't mean it actually does. Alright, so I pulled the covers off this thing. I've got some cables already hooked up. I haven't put power on here yet. I'm going to do that once I'm recording properly. So that's what the bottom view is. And you can see there's two individual amplifiers in there, which are, look like the same part. So 5086-7356 is the model number of those, marked as HP. So obviously that's what it's doing. This has got option one, which I believe is the dual output. And there's actually not much to this thing. It's basically power supply, the looks of it. There's a couple of electrolytic caps in there, maybe a tantalum. There's like electrolytic, that looks like a tantalum down there, maybe a tantalum down there. It's got an adjustment, which I'm guessing is power supply adjustment. So basically it looks like a couple of standalone amplifiers in a box, basically. And that's what's on the other side. Not much. No reefer caps, that's always a bonus. First I need to change line voltage, so I'll do this. I'm not going to change the fuse this yet. So, 115 volts. See so 30 volts. Okay, let's power this thing up for the first time. I've got power plugged in. It's upside down, it's purely so I can see if it does smoke, where the smoke will come from. So I can identify it. Let's power that up. No current being drawn so far over here on my wind meter or anything. That's all looking fine. Let's turn the power on. Okay, got a power light. That lights up. No smoke. There is currently nothing on my... Interesting, I've got 100 megahertz showing up even though I've got nothing on. So I've got a 10 dB attenuator. So I've got my CMU200 set of peak holding. So I'll power this back on. Well, as you can see from my CMU200 screen, I'm getting a peak there about 100 megahertz. Now my RF generator is at 10 megahertz. So I'm getting some kind of 100 megahertz noise from here somewhere. It's a bit puzzling. Anyway, my generator is currently set at minus 50 dBm output and the amplifier is turned on. So, and that's at 10 megahertz, which is gonna be right down here. So it's right at the edge of the screen. So actually it might make it a bit higher. I might make it 50 megahertz actually. There we go. There's a spike right there. You just see it. So if I do a uh, marker peak search, there we go, 50 megahertz. And we're at minus 41.8 dBm. Okay, so let's increase the output level here. There you go, minus 30 dBm. And we're now getting minus 26 over there, which is interesting. Let's check for any loose connections. Now don't forget, I'm also running through a 10 dB attenuator. There we go. This connection wasn't great on there either. It's a bit loose. That's fine. So I've got a minus 10 dB attenuator on there. Get to minus 30. I'm getting minus 20 out. So that's 20 dB gain. So let's go minus 20. So it should be about 10 dB higher. There you go. Minus 9. So that's about 10 dB. So yep, that's 20 dB gain. That seems like it's working. Minus 10 dB. And yep, we're getting 0 dBm on there. Yep, that looks like it's working fine. So I've got minus 10 dB output, a minus 10 dB attenuator. So therefore, I should be 0 dBm with 20 dB gain, which is what I'm getting. So that amplifier looks like it's working. Excellent. So 400 megahertz output for my generator. You can see when you peak over here, which is showing us minus 11 dBm. I'm outputting minus 20 dBm with a 10 dB attenuator. So that is correct. That's basically 20 dB gain still. Excellent. Seems to be working fine. So I've now swapped over onto the other amplifier, and that is doing minus 11 dBm as well. So that's at 400 megahertz. That seems fine. Let's drop the frequency down to say 50 megahertz. 
and you'll see a spike come over here looks about the same as well so that looks like it's working fine markers peak peaks over here minus nine so there we go both amplifiers are working actually we'll say it works completely that's unusual so don't forget to subscribe click the bell icon to get notifications give us a thumbs up if you like the videos and i'll uh, see you next one bye So I can see a spike there, I can't see what things are, I think it's 100 megahertz leaking through again. So let's increase my output. Oh, great. Power outage. Hopefully it comes back on again. It has. Let me see if turned off. Because my little UPS can't handle the loading. Too much loading for it one go.